Alright. <coughs> so, um, we went over whole notes last week, right? What's that symbol? The little T with an arrow on the bottom. That? What's that symbol? Depth. So that's how deep the hole is. So this right here is telling me 2x. What's 2x mean? Because there's two of them, right? Yeah. I know it's that one because that one's got its own dimension and it's too big. Right? So there's two of them. 12.5 in diameter, 0.16 deep. This one, don't write that. That's old. And should I do it like that? Yeah, I should bring it up. Should it be out of the park? Give it a dimension. So I just I should do something like that. Don't do it in the middle. <clears throat> you want to pull it out. This is a tolerance. We'll talk about that next week. Um, so there. You could do it like that, but it's really better to do it like this. This is the better way to do it. <clears throat> Some of the other notes we have, so we are talking about R, SR, and, and S diameter. What do you think those mean? Spherical. Spherical. So what does that mean? three dimensions, so it's a ball, or a dome, or, uh, that's not a sphere. Actually, that might be. I can't be. Like here, that would, could probably continue around to a full circle, so that would be a spherical radius. Yeah. So the S means that it's spherical, so it's not just two dimensions, but it's all three. So like if you had this, they call it out that spherical radius, you know this is a round part, and that's a dome on the end of it, and that's cylindrical. <clears throat> um, these parentheses mean it's reference. So if we went back to this piece here, We gave it that dimension. And we gave it that dimension because that's what we really care about. But it'd be nice for the machinist to know how deep he needs to cut that. Then we could add that one in also. But make a reference. We put the parentheses around the number. That makes it a reference dimension. So the inspector knows to ignore that. And, and the machinist knows that that's just kind of for his information. But this is what we really care about. We don't really care about that number matching. It's this one that we care about. Okay? So the, the reference just kind of makes it clearer for, for the machinist, or whoever's making it. Um, we talked about that one last week? Or did I save that for this week? What about that one? You're talking about those last week or not? Did I talk, say I talked about them tonight? Okay. I can't remember. So counter bore. Like that, right? You got two holes. That a wider one on the top, skinnier one there, so we can do um, what? Why do we use counter force? Like you have to get, like there's a uh, reset bolt or whatever, you have to get that down and you get the tool or whatever. Yeah, you want to have the bolt head down here, not not above your surface. 
you can count it more. So here what we're going to do is we're going to dimension it. And we're going to give it a note. So we're going to come off of the hole. We're going to come off the hole, not the counter bore. Come off the hole. Can you guys see that red? Yeah. There we go. I'll do it in green. So I'm going to come off the hole, and I'm going to do a counter bore. Diameter, whatever that diameter is. So whatever the diameter of the counter bore is. Depth, whatever that depth is. Okay. So this top line, I'm talking about this. So if that was A and B, so this is my A dimension. And that's my B dimension, right? So the counterbore symbol, the diameter symbol, whatever A is, the depth symbol, whatever B is. And now I can come through the next line and say diameter, whatever that the whole diameter is. And if it's what all the way through, that's it. If I have a depth on that, I can say depth, and then give the depth of the hole. And where does, it, if I did a depth there, where would that measure? So if my hole, goes like that. So that's C, which is there. And then there, here's my depth of the hole. Where is that depth measuring it from? Right on top of where it tapers. Okay, it's coming down to here, right? So D comes down to there. Where does it start? Does it start here or does it start there? It's there, all the way to the top. So both B and D measure from the top surface. Okay. So that's the counter bore note. And then the counter sig note is exactly the same, but now instead of having that, we have that. So still now it did be <coughs> counter sink, diameter, whatever. Depth, whatever. And if you don't, if you don't give it an angle, you assume it's ninety degrees. They could also give a an angle here, so something degrees. And that'd be the degrees of the countersink. So if they had a skinny countersink for some reason, but usually it's ninety degrees because that's what flat heads are. They're not really 90 degrees, are they? No. What, 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 what's the angle of a flathead screw? The angle from one side to the other side. 82. So it's really 82. But they also have some 90 degree ones, so if you have, if you have something different, you'd specify it. If not, just put it in the counter. <laughs> Any questions on that? You see how I did it two separate lines? You'll see sometimes where they'll do the, the counterbore diameter, then the next line for the depth, then the next line for the diameter of the hole, then another line. That just takes up too much space. It's better to keep everything for the counterbore on one line, the hole on the other next line. Because now if I want it threaded, so that could be my tap drill, I could do another line underneath that for my thread, right? So like we did last week. So cylinders, so an outside cylinder 
is different. Cylinders, we wanted to mention, where it's rectangular, not where it's round. Why? Why would I rather dimension here than that view? Even, even more basic than that. Yeah. I can get rid of that view now. Remember we were picking views? This is all I need. I don't even need that view. Right? So that's another one of the rules. That every, every view you have should have a dimension on it. If you don't need to put a dimension on that view, you don't need that view. It's as easy as that. If there's no dimension to put on it, there's no reason to draw in the first place. <clears throat> so this makes our drawing a lot easier just by having it on one view. When we still put the diameter symbol though in front of the text, we know that that is a round piece. You guys remember that back from like week two or something like that? Which one of those is better? Which one is, do the dimensions show you the, the shape better? Can you relate them back to it? A or B better? B. A's? Any A's? Any B's? They have the same dimensions, they're just in different places. So A's, the A's, any takers, B's. Yeah, B's got it. Why is that one better than that one? What do you mean? The diameter and the radius. Oh, it has those. Oh. This one has, but yeah, the, that's really hard to see, right? Yeah. But even past that, <coughs> is this one breaking any rules? I don't think so. Isn't that breaking a rule? Isn't that breaking a rule? That one's breaking a rule. But look at this 20. So if we look at this 20 here, compared to the same 20 here, which one shows you what the part looks like? Over here, you have a line, right? Can you tell anything from that line? Is, that, is this sort of slanted? Is it vertical? Here, you can tell that, oh, that's that width of that whole piece. Same thing down here. This 20, I can see, oh, that's what that is. Here, it's just a line. I don't know what that line is doing. So you wanted to put the dimensions where you see the shape of the part. So I see the L shape here. Put the dimensions on that view. Here, I can see the depth of that cut, the width of that cut. Put it here. Down here, those are just lines. I don't know what's going on. Just by looking at this, that could be a curve back there. I can't tell. Up here, oh, it's a square cut. So put the dimensions where you can see the shape of what you're describing. Okay? So kind of one easy way to check. If you dimension it, it's just a line. There's no corners or anything. <coughs> Probably not the best place to put it. Try and see where else you can put it that now you can see a, a shape not just a line starting in the middle of some other line. Okay? <clears throat> so, this is the hardest part about it, is making sure you dimension everything. So for everything, there's a size and a location. When I first started working, I went about six months without dimensioning diameters for holes. I mentioned locations of the holes, and then I just forget about diameters. And then I went about six months more after that, putting diameters, but forgetting locations. 
So you have to remember, location and size for everything. So like holes need a location both vertically and horizontally, and the size on it. So here, I'd say 4x, right? There's four of them. So I'd say 4x, whatever. <coughs> How about all these filts? Well, it's full of rounds. How can I take care of that? What? No. Even easier. Yeah, make a note. Say all. Remember? All. Full of rounds. Radius. Whatever, right? Just make a general note. Now I cover all these folks rounds around the outsider. <coughs> um, here, see what I'm using? The center lines are being used to connect the holes together. So now by connecting those two with the center line, now I just need to mention these two, and it keeps it, these ones in position also. So center lines can be used to connect holes or features together. <coughs> Same thing here. The center line. The center line of this part is giving me a horizontal location for that hole. So I don't have to put a dimension to that center line. Because it's on it's already on that. It's already defined. So you can use the center lines to help line stuff up so you don't have to dimension them. If it's on a center line, you know it's supposed to be centered. You don't have to put that other one in also. Okay. Yeah? Like, well, if I was in a I saw that drawing like that, we take the, where it has the four holes and you have the, like, I mean, you take that as center to center. The holes have to be certain. Yeah. Like, yeah, because here's the center to center. That's the center to that way. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> so here's some other options. Um, so what we have here is baseline dimensioning. It's like this, where you start at one edge and you go up, where you start at one edge here and you go over. That this is baseline. We also have chain dimensioning, where you go one from one to the next to the next to the next to the next. And so, they both kind of have their spot. If you're doing everything baseline like this, you have a lot more control over where those individual holes are. But let's say these two holes are for another piece that's going to connect to it. And those two holes, as long as the space in between them is good, they can move around. In that case, what we want to do is we want to, instead of doing... Instead of, oops, instead of putting that dimension in, we'd want to put that dimension. So we'd want to combine the baseline with the chain. Because now that dimension between them is important. So now if this one gets messed up and they move, they're still going to stay tied to each other. Kind of like what this one is. It tied those two holes together by dimension between them. Okay. We also have what's called ordinate dimensioning, where now we pick a corner and set it at zero, zero. And so now we just measure out, so that's 5, that's 19, that's 30, that's 48, 64, and then same thing going up. Imagine how big this would be if we did a baseline. Like that. We'd have dimensions all the way down here. But by doing this, now it keeps it nice and easy. <clears throat> and we can also add a table. So we couldn't dimension each of these holes off like that until at five, six, whatever. Or here, now I just go, oh, that's a B, that's a B, that's a B. Those are all 4.8. So now this, this makes the drawing a lot neater. 
Questions? Any questions? You're saying if you use 4.8, 4.8 from where? Oh, this switch is the diameter. Okay. So that whole diameter. Okay. These ones are giving the XY dimension. Okay. And you can mix it. So if I had another hole here that is real important for this hole to this hole to be a specific, I could dimension that one normally also. Ones. These? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> they, they don't have anything to do with the, with the, the, the ornate part. They're part of the title block or something. <clears throat> so these are our dimensioning rules. I've boiled it down to six. In some textbooks you'll find it's like 60, covering like 10 pages or like three or four pages of writing. Like 60 or 70 different rules. I boiled it down to this. <clears throat> and so, 4, 5, and 6 are breakable. These ones are breakable. 1, 2, and 3, you can never break. In 4, 5, and 6, you break in order. So, you break 6 first, and then if you. So, if you have. If you have you try and do it, put it out inside the envelope, and then put it inside the part, and then cross the dimension line. But you should pretty much never have to get to breaking number four. You, you can probably move stuff around, or by breaking five and six, <coughs> not have to break four. <coughs> so what's the part envelope? The outside of the shape, right? If you made it into a box. So if you can't get everything outside that envelope, go ahead and put something inside of it. After that, don't put anything inside the part unless you really have to. And after that, don't really, that really should go all the way down to the next thing. That should all go all the way to four. Very, I don't think I've ever had to break number four. I could usually find somewhere else to put it, maybe move it to the, the other side of the part or something, so that I don't have to. What? Draw another view. Yeah, draw another view, something like that. Um, and then don't over dimension. So don't put all three of the dimensions when you only need two of them. Don't put the same dimension twice. So like on this one. Don't put that and that, right? That's the same dimension twice. Or don't give me the depth there and the depth there. I, this and this are the exact same thing. I don't need it both places. That's just making it more confusing. Don't dimension, don't dimension the hidden lines. And every view must have one dimension. So that's it. I know, long night. This is DIM 1A, <coughs> and I forgot to post the laps tonight, um, <coughs> but this is going to be the first one, and so what we're going to do is you're going to dimension those. First thing though is decide, do you need all those views? So if we're looking at this one, do we need all, all three of those views? No. Which, one do I need, which one should I get away from, or get rid of? So, you said I don't need the top? Do I need the side? Same as the front, right? 
So on this one, I can do everything on, on that front view. Okay? <clears throat> so, based on the, figure out which views you need, and then put in where the dimensions go. And just put X for the value. I'm gonna make it easy on you guys. Because these books aren't really that nice. Um, just put out where it would be and put an X. So, like we're gonna want a diameter there. And so I put my portable. I go to a small pin. Whatever, right? I just just put an X in it, but put where they should all be. Okay. Same thing for those. My thing fell off. Um. So do 1A, 2A, and 3A. So that's your practice for tonight. 1A, 2A, and 3A. And just on all of them, just put the X where the where the value should be. Okay. Questions? And I'll post that online right now. <laughs>